Flash. Uh, he's he's pretty cool, I guess. I I just know that I never got too into the character in any of his forms, whether Flash was Jay Garrick, Barry Allen, or Wally West. Well, Flash, the greatest stories ever told, contains stories dealing with all of those characters, and I have to say, it was pretty entertaining and a good jumping off point for casual readers of Flash like myself. The book's collection is all over the place with Flash comics number 84 and 104, the first volume of Flash with numbers 123, 155, 165, and 179, DC special series number 11, and the second volume of Flash number 981. What you can or cannot tell from that list of issues is which Flash this collection mostly focuses on. Well, I'll tell you, it's Barry Allen. That being said though, there's not really any writer that is seen throughout most of the book. It features the writing talents of Robert Kaniger, John Broom, and Mark Waid, among many others, and the penciling talents of Lee Elias, Carmine Infantino, and Mike Ringo, again, among many others. So it's kind of hard to get a definite grip on the quality of those aspects for this book. It really varies too much. But that doesn't mean that I can't tell you that the writing is fairly good, regardless of the issue and writer. From the pages of the original Flash in the 40s to Wally West's run in the 90s, I really enjoyed the plots and dialogue. And speaking of that plot, there's a whole issue devoted to the breaking of the fourth wall. Simply put, it was fantastic, and the clear favorite, at least for me, of the collection. Flash, being able to cross into other dimensions, yes, that's how fast he is, finds himself in our world, and he meets the editor of DC. It, now, if that's not awesome, I really don't know what is. Other than that superb issue, there are some other gems in here, and none of the issues felt bad in any way. The art is the same way. Most of it is dated, yes, but you can tell that, for the time, it was definitely some of the best. Especially the 40s Flash issues. I was really surprised by the overall look and relative polish of the art, and it's probably some of my favorite from the era. So, overall, Flash The Greatest Stories Ever Told is a book with a subjective title. I can't tell you if these really are the greatest stories ever told, but I can tell you that it was an entertaining read for someone not really into The Flash. That being said, I'm sure Flash fans will love this one, and anyone looking to get into The Flash should check this one out. And come on, who else has a prominent rogue that's a gorilla?